<laughs> Would you like a bit of yeah. Yes, yes, please, please Lena. <laughs> this is Ben, Liam, and Bell on Nova. Well, good day there, podcaster, and welcome to pull the salami over my eyes. Uh, in reference to pizza, pizza is mentioned uh, in in here as well, as well as a lot of other things. Um, partners saying offensive stuff. Uh, we speak to a kazooer. Um, who broke a world record along with 9,999 other kazooers. Liam gets a special birthday present. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's my birthday today. So a lot's happening. We also talked about a horrific plane crash. Yes, which I personally, one of my favourite things we but did. But we, we did it in a light-hearted fashion. Yes. So. Ooh, insensitive. Well, well you're going to be light-hearted around heavy topics. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, <laughs> real, realistically, you know, those kids like survived for so long that the death of the pilot and the mother actually happened. A long time ago. Long time now. ago, yeah. Early yeah. early May, which isn't that long ago. But it's long enough that you can Yes. You can I'm talk about it in a light hearted sense. Yep. Anyway, enjoy <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy. Ben, Liam, my partner Luke said the most offensive thing to me on the weekend. It, he said something that I had to sit there and I held my tongue and I was like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kick up a fuss. I'm was just it gonna more offensive what he said. Uh, than what we say on a regular basis? No, that's just next level, and that's also uh, recorded and yeah. accessible to anyone who listens to the podcast. We essentially get um, paid to make fun of Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I accepted this job, and I was like, wow, I'm going to step up in my career. Yeah. I've been promoted. Next minute, yeah. I come in, and it's just, oh, you're wearing your hair a bit different today. <laughs> oh, look at this new coat. So now you're getting it at work, <laughs> and you're getting it at home. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so we were sitting on the couch on uh, Friday night, and we were having a nice, just a nice quiet night, like going, you know, um, it's the end of the week and, and long weekend, how lovely. Uh, and I, we were just, you know, drinking some wine, having a nice time, and Luke just randomly, out of nowhere, says, I saw the prettiest girl today. Prettiest girl I've ever seen. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm? <laughs> very, to- very tone deaf thing to say. Was the, he was obviously working up to say yeah, he so saw a photo of you somewhere. Maybe he saw your billboard or something like in that. In my head, or... yeah. In my head, I was like, oh, this is where he turns to me. And he goes, yeah, yeah. I saw a photo of you or whatever. No, yeah. no. No, he, he doubles down and he goes, yeah, I was walking in the city, uh, just along Collins Street, and she was crossing the lights, and uh, she just had one of those faces, like, just really naturally pretty. Um, she didn't even, like, have to try. She had, like, a hoodie and jeans on. <laughs> wow. But she just looked so beautiful. Way more gorgeous than you. Like, yeah. she made you look well, like Well, that's pretty she- much what he was saying. <laughs> you know how, like, you look okay sometimes, but you've really got to try. Like, I see how much you try, you know? Like, you're in there for hours in the bathroom. You're just trying. Like, not this girl. No, just the... Bone structure. Incredible. I thought I was on a movie set for a second there. I was like, sorry, is this a joke? Is this the Truman Show? Are he they filming said, me? He goes, oh, she she must be a model. She must be a model because she's just the effortless, effortless beauty. What was your face doing at this, this sort of time? Like, well, you, I, did you drop your wine glass? Or? Honestly, and this is you know showing my workings a bit, I sat there and grabbed my phone slowly and mm. he said, don't you write this down and say it on air. <laughs> well, here we are. So you say that to me and this is what happens. That's like in my relationship, that's a death sentence. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I reckon that's like... you never say that to Sam, I would, No, would I would you? never say that. I would never say that in a million years because I would be killed. You can think... Oh, that gets pretty. And then and then that thought disappears and yeah. it never has to see the light of day. So like when you're watching a movie, they say, do you think she's pretty? And you go, gosh, she's ugly. She's <laughs> ugly, big uggo. Her? Oh, she's feral. <laughs> That's Margot Robbie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, feral. What's her name? Charlize, weird name. Charlize Theron. <laughs> Ugly. That's what I think. Ugly. Oh, actually, you know, I know what I do in movies or TV shows if we're watching something together. I'll yeah. say, I'll say, oh, she's really pretty. And I'll wait and see if he agrees <laughs> or not. And if he goes, yeah, I'll be like, okay. Then he goes, you think she's pretty? You should see that girl across the street. I honestly, I followed her for like three Ks just to get more photos of how this, the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. I couldn't believe it. I, well, couldn't, I could not believe it. Like, yeah, like you said, like I get, like there's beautiful people. And you can think that other people are beautiful when you're in a relationship, of course. You can't mm. just switch off. But yeah, it was pretty... It's pretty offensive to me as I'm sitting there in like a stain, like stain tracky, stain yeah. jumper. My heart goes, like, well, 13, 24, 10. What's the most offensive thing your partner's said to you? Mm. Yeah. Maybe you've even, you know, you're getting ready for a big night out or something like that. You've got the hair all curled and they've come home. And they're like, oh, right. Well, you, you go get ready and I'll, you know, and you're like, what are you talking about? Like, I've, <laughs> I've spent all day getting ready. Why don't we put up a $100 Uber Eats voucher to our favourite nice. caller for this one? 13, 24, 10. What's the most offensive thing your partner's said? Holly joins us now in Hillsville. Good morning, Holly. I actually went to Hillsville <laughs> on the weekend. 
weekend. I went there yesterday, um, and I went and saw your big dam. Did a big dam there. Oh, really? Yeah, lovely, lovely dam. Anyway, uh, parents what's... got married there. Oh, did they at the big they dam? Did. Yeah. <laughs> wow. They do weddings at the dam. Yeah. It's a beautiful location. What are they? Did what, they get married? Is it a dam or a lake? It's a no. Well, it's there's a, dam. a the, so the reservoir's above it, and then they've dammed it up. And okay. you get married, at and the you can wall? walk. So, do they get married at the wall of the dam? I mean, the, it was about like I don't know, thirty-one years ago. Right before <laughs> the dam was even there, potentially. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Holly, uh, what's the most offensive thing your partner's ever said? Oh, so we were talking the other day and he said that he was going through all of my old photos on Facebook Mm. and I had uploaded a photo of a model from behind, not wearing much, with a veil. And I said, I would have a bum like that on my wedding day. And he turns to me and he goes, you didn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, damn. Unnecessary, isn't Unnecessary. it? Unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. Not needed. Not needed. He so- could have turned around and said, Wow, I thought that was you. Yeah. But no. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan in Backers Marsh, uh, did your partner say something rather offensive to Yeah, he did. Well, it started off quite nice. He said, Oh, you could be a model. And I was kind of taken back. I said, Oh, really? Thank you. And he said, Yeah, you'd be a plus size model, but you'd definitely be a model. <laughs> Just stop when you're ahead. You know what I mean? Like you're ahead with that comment. Just, like, just you're already winning. Like you're, you're two nil up. You know what I mean? Like why? Sorry about that, Morgan. Uh, Jane in Lilydale. Uh, come on, tell us. And you've got one of these shocking partners. You said something offensive. Hi. Good morning, all. So my husband um, turned around to me when I was pregnant with my first baby and said, "Which way is this baby coming out? From the front or the behind?" Because I was so round. Oh. <laughs> I don't even get it. I don't even understand. I don't, I don't even sort of saying that you're doing such a big poo that it would be, almost be like giving birth. Is that what he's? No, I wasn't in labour at the time. I was oh. just pregnant. So yes, you don't That's... have a. Your back doesn't have a bump coming out of it. Like that doesn't. No. That doesn't it's all round. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, yeah, I can see, Jane, what's, it's confu- it's, if it's confusing us like 20 years on, I'm sure it would have been doing absolute nightmares That's to your awful. head that night, well, you know? Look, Jane, you clearly are still thinking about it, so to make it a little bit better, we'll give you the $100 Uber Eats voucher thanks to the show sponsor, What If. Oh, thank you so much. And no, Jane, no that, was, that was not a targeted prize. It just, <laughs> that was that was pre-mentioned, uh, and it just so happens that, you you know, that's what your story was. So. Yeah, don't overthink it. Hey, have you checked out whatif.com's top 10 winter weekenders yet? Yeah, how does a what-if tip? Bendigo is in there, Lakes Entrance, Ellie, Ellie Beach. Beach. Book your winter getaway on the What If app. What If, it's Aussie for travel. It's 610. Hallelujah, it's 610. Liam and South Morang, g'day. How was your long weekend? It was fantastic. Oh, wonderful, mate. Did you catch the game last night? Uh, no, I didn't actually. Okay. <laughs> well, more than two point three million was raised for fight M and D at the big freeze at the G. Do you know who won out of the demons or the pies? Oh, the demons won. He's good. Good game as well. Uh, Collingwood almost came back in the last thirty seconds. Crazy. S- Sam Pang has been announced as the host of the Logies this year. Who replaced Sam on Nova? You guys. He's Very done good. it. He's done it. <laughs> Jenny <laughs> from Blackpink quit halfway through their concert at Rod Laver Arena on the weekend. What country are Blackpink from? Oh, I think South Korea. Oh, he's good. You're killing wow. it. Are you into your, into your K-pop, Liam? No, not at all. Okay. Well, neither is Jenny at this point because she's quit the band. <laughs> hey, um, Pizza Hut might be closing down after the franchise owner changed hands. Uh, can you name one other pizza chain, not including Domino's? Uh, crust. <laughs> <laughs> so, we yeah. thought you'd yeah, say yeah. that. Ben, ben had money on crust. Can I you had... uh, before you say yours, Liam? Can you can you go one more that isn't crust or Domino's or Pizza Hut? Name one more pizza franchise. Absolutely not. Because okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought the your third and or fourth option might have been Eagle Boys. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> Eagle Boys? <laughs> Are they still around? I don't think in Victoria. No. Well, no, I, I think, think uh, we do. Well, I think it was in weird spots. Like, I think it was in, like, Queensland. Like, I, I don't remember yeah, having I it in South Queensland. Australia. Yeah, I, I just remember eating it in Queensland one time. Yeah, so there's one in Bendigo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then there's like it's kind of like a regional chain. Okay. Right. Yeah. I feel like before the end of the show, we should call um, Eagle Boys Bendigo and just. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Laura Pizza. Yeah, just, I don't know. Just oh my like, God, no one's ever done this. Yeah. <laughs> don't be mean. So they're like coughing on all the dust on the phone. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't, I haven't picked this up since 2008. <laughs> I'm um, sorry to anyone if you uh, if you've got ownership of an Eagle Boys franchise. Um, I'm sure your pizza's great. Anyway, Liam, last question here. This is why yep. Bill Murray is dating Khalees. Can you finish these lyrics? It's better than yours. <laughs> five for five. How's this? We're just hearing now, Liam. <laughs> This is a fun fact for you. Eagle Boys, actually owned by Pizza Hut. So they very much have been pulling the wool over our eyes. They've been putting the little slices of ham and salami across our eyelids because they have some sort of pizza monopoly over all of us. They do. So, yeah. you know, you, you think you have a choice, but you don't. It's all going back into the same that pockets. That means if, if there is the fear of Pizza Hut dying, Eagle Boys that will could, die too. That also could mm. mean we'll be... Sadly, without Eagle Boys. Anyway, Liam, uh, this has been fun. Uh, thank you. Um, Belle did promise a sneaky prize for yes. whoever won the quiz. Congrats, Liam. You have thank won you. a family pass to Sovereign Hills Winter Wonderlights from June 24 to July 16. Oh, Look awesome. at sovereignhill.com.au. And, Liam, if you can get yourself thank to you. Bendigo, you can have a Hawaiian on us. I might have to. Yeah. Really. Also, you get to choose the next song we play. The good news keeps on coming, Liam. Do you want to hear La Bouche? Or, as a fellow Liam, I'm sure you'd be into this, is it an Oasis kind of morning? It's definitely an Oasis kind yeah, of morning. Yeah, that's what I was hoping to hear. Yeah. All right. Slip inside the eye of your mind. Don't you know you might find a better place to play? And if you never got to see Oasis, well, you might be in luck because obviously the Gallagher brothers, they've been having Biffo since like 2009, since the band broke so, up. So for people that don't know, I'm kind of around it, Liam, you're super around it. So they're actual brothers, the two, yeah, yeah, two yeah. guys, Liam and Noel. Yeah, and then there's Paul, but he's not in the band. He's, you know, he's kind of Is like there the, a third brother? Yeah, Paul Gallagher. He's it's always a bonus kind one. Kind of this chunky guy who doesn't, yeah, <laughs> never had any musical talent. And so uh, Liam and Noel, uh, 2009, is that when they had the proper fight? They hate yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, that's when they blew up at a, at a it was out Why? of gig, they broke up. Oh, they just hated each other's guts. Like, yeah, I don't know, just money, brothers fight, I suppose. Yeah. You know, rock and roll, baby. Yeah, right. You know, you know, if you watch the documentary, Supersonic Oasis is like a Ferrari, you know, nice to look at, nice to drive, and every now and then it'd spin out of control, you know. Yeah, right. Come on. And so uh, people were actually talking about them on the weekend, about the reunion, because... Yeah, so I don't know if you, if you saw Man City, um, who are, the, the, you know, they're from Manchester, and Man City is the team that they've always supported, even before, before mm. they had all the oil money. And they won the Champions League. That was kind of like the one trophy that they'd never won, and they, they won it uh, on Sunday morning, unfortunately. making the, make, like, it's, So it said they won the treble, so mm -hmm. it's sort of, you know, they won the, the FA Cup, the Champions League. And the Premier League, which is horrific. So they've, had, they've really. had a perfect year. Pretty much. And, um, yeah, I think Liam tweeted like a month ago. He said, if if City win the Champions League, I'm calling the, my brother and we're getting the band back Whoa. together. So there you go. Has Does there his been, brother know that? Has there been any update? Has he said No, anything? I don't know. I don't know. So just watch this space. Okay. So it could be an Oasis comeback at the end of the year. Exciting. I have been so excited to talk about this story um, about the kids in the Amazon rainforest. They found them on Saturday morning. And so I've been waiting, because it was a long weekend, extra long to talk about it. Um, I'll paint the details if you're not across the story. Belle, you kind of know it, Liam. You're I not... saw the headline. Liam, you're not aware oh, of it. I have no idea what's going on. Okay, so Southern Columbia, Amazon rainforest. Two adults and four kids are on this single engine plane. There's a pilot, a mum, and four kids, right? The kids are 13, so teenager, nine, four and an 11-month-old baby. Yeah, right. Single plane engine fails. Plane crashes. Mum, pilot, die. Oh, no. Horrible. Imagine that. Imagine being those kids, and literally the two adults and your mum in front of you have died on this plane crash. 40 days they survive by themselves in the Amazon rainforest. Me? 40 days. They call it jaguar country. Venomous wow. snakes, spiders, everything can kill you. And the 11th month old survived. Lived. Whoa. 
the 13-year-old, 9-year-old, 4-year-old looked after the 11-month-old. They survived off the tiny bit of food that was on the plane and then they just ate fruit for 40 days until the Colombian army could find them. That is crazy. 40 days. Imagine I couldn't survive in there. I'm a, I'm a fully-fledged adult. No. These kids survived in the Amazon rainforest. No, I wouldn't be able to survive. I'm pretty sure days. the woman who won won alone that television mm. show where they throw like grown adults <laughs> yeah. in Tasmania, just in Tassie, with, yeah. and they've got like clothes on, and they just have to forage for stuff. They, they I mean, she won you, after like 30 days, I think. You see, like the Western kids. Yep. They would not survive. No. They would die Especially so quick. Especially looking after an 11-month-old. Oh, that 11-month-old's needs is through the roof. Imagine and- a Western kid. Imagine, imagine if the iPad went flat. They would die. That's true. Let alone in the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> Miss Miss Bluey on Sunday morning. Die. <laughs> die it. <laughs> Couldn't watch the first episode at eight. Die at ten. So I was I was blown away when I saw the story. Oh, that is incredible. Um but I haven't even got to the saddest part. Oh. Oh, I was sort of hoping we'd we'd have a happy end on the high. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there's there's one more oh, detail no. that I haven't shared yet. So they were found by Wilson. Wilson is a six-year-old Belgian shepherd. He was Wilson Security. No, no, <laughs> Wilson Rapid didn't find him. Uh, Wilson, who was a trained search dog oh. by the Colombian Army, found the the four kids. Great, everyone was happy. They found these kids. Well done, Wilson. And then, like a day later, someone was like, "Where's Wilson? He got lost in the Amazon." <laughs> <laughs> they, lost, they lost Wilson. Everyone was so. Wilson. Everyone was, you know, high fiving, back slapping. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wilson's just he's gone walkabout. How sad is that? Hang so on, I mean, how, how this many days dog, ago? The, the hero. There's like, if you look online, there's like photos of people getting like the with the army getting like selfies with like the dog. They're like, the dog found him. There's a yeah, hero, yeah, and yeah. they just lost the dog. <laughs> the dog's like, I've done my job. I'm going to go be free now. Fair. Oh no, it's crazy. Yeah, are they going to look for Wilson? I don't know. Probably not. It's a dog. I don't care. It's such a sad detail. I reckon the kids should go out there. And they, start, they should look. Send that, ba- send that baby back out there. I mean, if anyone can do it, they can. They've done 40 days. Some big games of footy over the weekend, Ben and Bell. Uh, just like 90-odd thousand other Melburnians, I went to see Carlton versus Essendon on Sunday. Got in there nice and early for the Charlie Kernow bobbleheads, of course. And there was a DJ <laughs> Did you there get before one? the game. Yeah, yeah, of course. I just need a context for people that don't know. <laughs> Liam got uh, free tickets to go see Carlton. Good for him. Um, but I, th- I believe, from what I can understand, the agreement between him and Carlton was he had to talk about the Charlie Kerno bobbleheads. Yeah. And I had one more to get away, uh, <laughs> and uh, so then now I've done that. Uh, anyway, um, you yeah, know, I, I, I'll be, you know, as much as I like to say I'm a huge fan, I'll, I'll put my hand up and say yes, okay? I didn't have a team at the start of the year. We put it out there. We said, 13, 24, 10, call the show, convince us why you know, I should be supporting your team. And, and we spoke to everyone. And I, I remember Laurie from Doncaster. She called up and she just she just had a really good vibe about her. And I, I actually ended up seeing a Carlton game with Laurie and her son after I picked Carlton. So I know that's a bit of a weird reason to pick a team. Like, you know, in a few years of people say, why Carlton? I'm like, oh, yeah, I was just doing this radio show and someone called up. I know that's strange. But I do love how people pick teams Sometimes just because, not because they live in the area or because they, their parents liked that team or whatever. They just have some sort of rogue reason. Like I was speaking to a fellow bagger next to me on the weekend and I asked her why she picked Carlton. And she said, because Mars Bar sponsored them. What? So it, it was just her favourite chocolate bar. And when she moved to Melbourne from Queensland, she was just like looking at the Guernseys and she just sort of, the Mars Bar like caught her eye and then she was like, well, that's the team for me. I guess the sponsorship things do work then. That's crazy. That's... Do you know what I mean? But I suppose like when, you, when you're when you splitting hairs and you're like, you don't really understand much about the sport and you're just kind of like, what oh, if I'm they just going to go with something. Well, that's true. But I suppose it's just the initial thing that Mars Bar got her in. Um, that's crazy. Like f- supporting a footy team and just a sport team in general, but footy is such, it's such a primal thing. Like it's such a like, it's in my DNA that I go... For Port Adelaide because my dad did and his dad did. It's so it's so. Is in, that why you go for Port? Hundred percent. It's yeah, so right. in your core, like when you're raised, you're raised as a supporter of this club. Whereas someone to go, I oh, like the Mars Bar sponsor. Mm. It's crazy. Well, it's, I mean, all I'm saying is you know, it's like it's obviously huge. That a lot of people are involved. Not everyone in that stadium is there because their dad's dad or their <laughs> mum's mum's or you know they had someone who you know grew up in the area or no. It's just some people just go like. Oh yeah, I like KFC, and they've got KFC wow. on their shirt, or whatever it may be. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Why 
did you pick your footy team, Melbourne? I'm just going to rule out because the team won the first game that you watch, yeah. or your family. That, your family. Like, yeah. Can like, we that, rule out? Can we rule out because you just like the colours? Yeah, yep. I think that's that's like also pretty standard. I know that's common. weird, but it's pretty pretty common. Yep. Um, so taking the colours out of it, taking the first yeah, win, the first win element and the family element out of it. Did you pick a footy team for some reason other yeah. than those things that we just mentioned? Thirteen, twenty four, ten is the number. Why did you pick your footy team? We do have prizes up for grabs. Uh, Hannah in Elwood, why did you pick your footy team? Um, I go for Collingwood, and it was solely because I just love magpies. I love the birds. So I moved here from New South Wales a couple of years ago, and my partner said I have to pick a team. And I said, well, magpies are cute. I've never had them swoop me like grew up. My dad was always feeding them in the backyard, mm-hmm. and their families would come yep. um, every year without a doubt. So, yeah, it was an easy pick. Well, you really uh, picked them. At a, you've, got, you've bought yeah. your stock at a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. really do sound like you love magpies yeah. as well, Hannah. Yeah. You've got a lot of passion. I wouldn't say a commonly loved animal either, for sure. I think they're misunderstood. Maybe. Roz in Preston. Why did you pick the footy team? Um, we moved over from New Zealand 10 years ago. My husband said we had to assimilate with the Australians mm-hmm. and choose a team. Mm-hmm. So we did a Facebook quiz and it, it just asked <laughs> questions like, do you like mullet? Yeah, right. Um, do you like your player to have teeth? Yeah. Do you like tattoos, etc.? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we we got Richmond, and yeah. they were the worst team at the time, and everyone was like, why'd you choose them? But now they're good. Well, well, they, <laughs> well, they, they kind of they were kind of good, and now they're not good. Again. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's always that thing in footy as well when someone's had like a, a dynasty. Like it's like you're probably not going to get one again for like 20, yes. 30 years. Did you, Ros? Did you have your doubts like when you picked your team and they weren't going too well? Obviously, from a Facebook quiz. Uh, originally, did you have your doubts and you stuck with it? Well, I said to I went to work and people said, "Why the hell did you choose Richmond? You yeah. could have had anybody." Yeah. And I was like, "I'm choosing another." And my husband was like, "No, they don't. People don't swap once you've got them. You're, <laughs> you're locked in. You've told everyone in Richmond. That's We're now Richmond. I've already painted the fence, Ros. What do you want me to do, uh, Lucy in Melton? Why did you choose your footy team? I think we've got a very good looking team. We've got some really hot football players. Oh, nice. Who who is it? Western Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it, was it the Bailey it's Smith Bailey, thing? Bailey, isn't it? We've got the Bailey Smith. We've got the Marcus bonson Pallies. We Bond. had the Sean Higgins, yep. but unfortunately he's not playing anymore. But, yeah, we've got a pretty good-looking team. What about Libba? You got the hots for Libba, or is he a bit not, not your type? Yeah. Very yeah. Tattoo, very tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> He's, he's got. It doesn't even have Homer Simpson. Yeah, no, so he's I got saw, Bart on his I actually, arm. I was watching the game on the weekend, and he's got the one that everyone talks about. He's got Homer, but yeah. then if you look on his leg, he's got Selma in a bikini. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Selma smoking a durry. Oh, that's so good. If you didn't know, Liam is a special birthday boy. Yes, uh, twenty-seven today, and um, yeah, there's been a lot of chat this morning about this um, special birthday surprise coming my way. I mean, yep. notoriously over the last ten years, you forgot my birthday pretty much every every. Well, every time yep. I've had one, yeah. Not this time, though. No. A lot of thought, a lot of effort. I think actually I... Has I'm gone a, into this birthday present. 18th birthday, you came to my party uh, and you ga- you gave me like an old school clock that... Um, what? <laughs> what? I think it's because I was late for work that week and you go, bro, here's a money clock. And I, uh, <laughs> like, sort of like a bit of a... It's such like a, a young dig, Ben gag. It's like a d- d- dig present. Like it was one of those old <laughs> annoying ones. It wasn't even like a digital. It was one of those old annoying ones. That like with the, the alarm clock. Yeah, with the yeah. bell on the top. Like one that you'd have in yeah, a cartoon. Wow, That's not even the worst present that we've exchanged because do you remember, I reckon the first present you got me for like my 19th birthday... Mm. Do you remember when we were? It was our first year of knowing each other, and we were on air, and you got, you organised that clown to come in. <laughs> what? And he yeah, came in. He was, was this creepy he was clown. Pretty, he was pretty creepy. And the first thing he said was, "Happy birthday to you, Ben." <laughs> and Liam and I had no producers at that time, and it was yeah. like community radio. And we were like, "Oh my god, what is going on? This guy's going to kill us." <laughs> was he a real? Like, was he supposed yeah, to be like yeah, a fun no, clown, yeah, or did yeah, you get yeah, him like I, a creepy clown? I, I don't know purpose. if he's still with us. Fritz Sandwich was his name. I, I, I remember. <laughs> what? I remember his website. Yeah, but it was. It was. Yeah, it was. I think <laughs> he came in. And I was like, "Oh no, I'm uncomfortable with this." It was felt very like William H. Macy. Well, and then I'm pretty guess sure. What your prize is <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure after that the phone started ringing and like people were like, "Oh my God, Fritz Sandwich!" Like he came to my party, hit on my mum, and like people yeah. were like sharing stories about Fritz. Also, I just realised instead of John Wayne Gacy, I said William H. Macy. Very different people. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of the one of them is the actor from Wild Hogs, one of them is the clown serial killer. It's the 13th of June, which is Liam's birthday. <laughs> Seven.
happened today? Oh, stop it, guys. Come on. <laughs> no one wants to hear about this. Uh, well, I know that you love your birthday. And I know you put a lot of thought and effort into the people around you's birthdays. Um, I think you give quite thoughtful gifts. Yeah, um, like last year, I actually forgot about that one. But yeah, I got you a movie quality, um, like Star Wars Stormtrooper helmet. I got you um, that Scotty Cameron putter the year before that. Yep. Um, you've had tickets to shows and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, the list goes on. You certainly don't seem to think money's an issue when it comes to birthdays. That, uh, that limited edition, like uh, Michael Jordan basketball card when you got into cards for yeah, a while there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, forgot, list, the list goes that. on and on. Yeah. Um, I famously got you that plane. That was pretty good. Yeah, the no, model, that was, yeah, The that model was Jetstar plane. The ones that you can buy on um, domestic flights, like, you know, that has like a kid's section at the end and you can buy the... I'm pretty yeah. sure the um, plane is like $5 more than the toasty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> You're the type of person that <clears throat> whenever I get like a birthday card from you guys, it's always written by you. Like, yeah, yeah. You're the one that writes it. I'm, whereas... like, I'm kind of like the mum. Like, yeah. yeah, you open it and you'd be like, thanks, guys. And mm. I'm, uh, Ben's seeing the present for the first time, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, not this time. Wonderful. Not this time. This was all me, baby. It wasn't, wasn't producer Andy. It wasn't Belle. It was no nobody. It was all me. I feel like it's not going to be good. I'm just, you know, I've got this this awful feeling in the back of my head that it's just... No, no, no. You, I, th- I genuinely think you'll be excited. Um, I haven't wrapped it. Okay, that's fine. It's just in a tote bag. Yeah, One cool. step at a time for um, me. Inside the tote bag is a box. Yep. And your gift is inside said box. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to well, hand the tote you. bag Do over I get now. to keep the tote bag or you be... That's very, a bonus. What I will say is it's very light. It's very light, but that's okay. That doesn't mean... That Actually, doesn't no, mean you, can't keep, you can't keep the tote bag. Okay, that's fine. It's actually a... Uh, that looks like a, a promotional Aperol Spritz tote bag. <laughs> I think we were sent some stuff by the good folks at Aperol Spritz. Here we go. We have a box. Just going to pop, pop the lid on that one. Yep. Nice. It's like a hot dog box. Mm-hmm. And inside. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Pretty cool. Pretty cool, guys. It's a t-shirt that says, World's Best Godfather. Yeah, I like, I'm into that. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> That's nice. And I'd imagine I'll be wearing that as I'm delivering the baby. I'd imagine that... You're not delivering the baby. Well, I'll be in the room. But I know how much being the godfather means to you, so yes. I thought that that'd be a nice shirt. That's actually good. Yeah, I, I don't know if you think that wasn't good, but I'm actually that's really, I'm actually I'm, I'm actually happy with that. That's good. It costs like twelve dollars. No, that's fine. It's not, it's more about the meaning. I mean, it's like you know what I mean. Like it's like even if if I just talk this year up as like oh this year he gave me the Godfather shit. Yeah, like, that's fine. yeah, yeah. And, and maybe I'm if glad. You, maybe if you wanted to promise me the next one as well. Uh no promises. Okay, well we'll see. I mean, obviously I'll do baby something steps. good. Good. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Huh, very funny because there's going to be a baby on the way. My godson, pretty soon. So what'd you get him? Um, friendship. <clears throat> okay, Bill. Well, now she's man, the bad you're, friend. You're in the bad books. <laughs> oh, you're in the bad books. I've never been thought of it. <laughs> Bill, you love your true crime podcasts. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not really my cup of tea, but you're always coming in and saying to uh, Ben and I, like, oh, you want to hear about the one I heard this morning about this girl who got cut up? No, no, I don't want. we don't want to hear it. And then we say no, and then you proceed, then to, you tell proceed anyway. to tell us the most horrific things. But I did witness some true crime with my own eyes over oh, the weekend. Oh, really? Yes. Damn it. Yes, and let me tell you... Um, I don't get to hide behind my earbuds. Oh, no. You know, I witnessed it front on, and it's not a, it's not a fun sight. Um, so I was walking down Swan Street on Friday, um, around lunchtime. I uh, was just heading to Coles to get some bits and bobs. And, uh, yeah, I, I was listening to my music, and it was... Um, had like the, uh, the it, was, it was pumping pretty loud, so I wasn't really hearing what was going around mm. me, but I was like, oh, my God, like, all these cars started pulling up. Three cop cars pulled up, like from each, two from one side and one from the other direction, lights blaring. Mm. Cool. And then the cops, so I was like, oh, man, what's happening? And then, then they sort of came out of their cars and they were running towards my side of the street. Mm. But there was like no one around, like there was no one in front of me and I was kind of like, what's going on? And as I was walking, it was at that, um, you know, uh, Union House, the pub on, on Swan Street yeah. there. Um, and then next to it, it's it's not a bank. It's like a uh, it's like a gold bullion and silver place. You know, like you can go and you can trade like mm. cash. I think for like gold bullions, it does seem pretty ripe for the heist. Like it's sort of <laughs> to be fair, yeah. it feels like you know it's like you know when the you know the um, the people in the, in the olden days they find out about the train coming. Yeah. There's going to be yeah. no one there, so yeah. if they lay like a tree over it, they're going to be able to steal everything. That's yeah, it's kind of like that. But um, so I have my music in. It's, 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 was walking down and then I saw these cops running over. So that was to my right. And then to my left, there was this like woman crying 
in the window on the gold in the gold bullion shop. Mm. And uh, so I don't know if there was someone in there or probably most likely it was held up. I'm assuming she's called the police, locked the place, yeah. waited, waited for the police to come. But um, I didn't stick around to find out. <laughs> oh, that's the good bit of the story. What oh, what do you mean? I was like, oh, I've got this, guys. No worries. Well, no, you, you stand like... across the street and you see yeah. how it unfolds. No, no. I went to Coles. So to get the milk and the bananas. Oh. No, no, no. But of course How I came boring. back. I had to walk Jeez. past it. I had to walk past it. you got to see so the person I... running out with the bag. With so the I... With a big dollar sign on it. <laughs> I came Full back. Full of cold <laughs> Yeah. With a bandana around his face. Like 360 the other day, the rapper. 360. The other <laughs> yeah, day, 360, yeah. the rapper was in here at work and he was wearing a bandana around his face. Yeah, it was a bit much, mate. Yeah. It's commercial radio. I was radio. a little bit scary. I actually, I actually want to know where he was at midday last Friday because... Uh, <laughs> that, can't that, say I that. know, but that is the classic heist-wearing sort of outfit. So you don't know <clears throat> exactly what happened. No, yeah, so then I came back and then it had gone from three police cars to like seven police cars and they had the crime scene investigators and they had so there was the cops there was like the you know the boys and girls in blue mm. and then um it had like the the normal clothes detectives you know the Whoa. Ones were, and they were they had the dusting and it was all going yeah and you on. looked at that and said ugh, even more boring and yeah. walked home so did you end up getting any conclusion or you just know that it got robbed are you, are you honestly telling me if you think there's like someone holding up a thing you, you just you just like hanging you're hanging around there absolutely, and, absolutely. No. Yeah. I pull over yeah, I, when there's someone pulled over on the side of the road. I pull over to just watch. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's I love it. You've got a fascination with that sort of stuff. Like love I just, yeah. I didn't. I I needed to go to the shops and get on with the rest of my day. But. Fair enough. And who knew Melbourne had so many kazoo fans? Kazoo. One of the world's most annoying instruments, if you can even call it an instrument. You know this thing. <laughs> yeah. Just give it a little toot. Well, ten thousand. People in Melbourne rocked up to Fed Square on the the weekend to do the most people gathered for a kazoo. I mean, I, I'm assuming the la- I don't know what the last was nine thousand five hundred maybe. I mean, it it seems insane that I, I'm constantly surprised. Like just you know, mm. being newer to Melbourne, being like, wow, there was ninety thousand plus people at that footy game. This is like a mid table clash, mm. and everyone's there. But it, so it never ceases to amaze me that Melbourne can pull a crowd, but. 10,000 people gave up their long weekend to do this? Well, that's the thing. Because you guys, um, yeah, didn't grow up here, I grew up here. And to me, it was like a weekly occurrence where you'd log onto Facebook in like 2010. I, I kind of do remember that, though. And it used to be like, okay, well, you know, world record of people holding a flag up at Fed Square this Saturday. And it was just the most random things. Yeah, but your life must be so boring if you're going to that. You know what I mean? If you're like, I'm going to go to the most people holding a flag up event. That's They're, ridiculous. Honestly, it, they were every well, weekend. Look, this... This is from uh, Channel 9, I believe, on the news. This is the world record attempt. I want to hear you make some noise. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, my God. And we officially have 10,000 kazoos, Melbourne. We have done it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds... Like a swarm of wasps or bees. Could you imagine if you were like in the city, you know, maybe you were working late and you're like, oh, geez, the bosses, I have to finish this thing. And then you heard that sound, that terrifying sound coming from Fed Square. It also, because you, like, you can't show that you're excited when playing because it just sounds the same. So yeah. when they're all like, yay, it just goes, <laughs> Crazy. That's great. Lena uh, was actually there on the weekend. Congratulations on breaking a world record, Lena. Uh, were you close to the front? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. It was incredible to be a part of such a weird and wacky event. <laughs> so I, I, in my head, there would have been a bunch of people handing out kazoos to passers-by. They would, they would have got as many as they could to, to compete in this world record. Was it pre-planned, though? Did you rock up planning to do that, or were you, just a, were you a, a, a pedestrian and you got roped into doing it? Oh, no. My friend and I had long awaited the kazoo record. We're very much into weird and wacky things, and this was right up my alley. <laughs> so, so did you see it on, like, a Facebook page, or how did you know it was happening? They were posting kazoo memes on the uh, on their Instagram, and, of course, like, I love a good meme, so I'm going <laughs> to rock Who's, up to a kazoo Sorry, I, I'm picking this apart. <laughs> Who's Instagram? Who, who organised all this? Oh, this is Rising Festival at Melbourne. It's like an experimental art festival, which fits right in with the, the oh, kazoo. This checks out. That makes okay, sense. we're getting answers now. Okay. We're getting answers. <laughs> and was was there anyone with, you know, I think I saw some of their biodegradable kazoos being handed out. 
Was there anyone saying, oh, no, thanks, I brought my own kazoo? <laughs> like, I, I'd yeah, not. people have their own kazoos. <laughs> yeah, okay. Did you use one of the biodegradable ones? Yes, yes, yeah. I did. Yep. And at the I end of it... I even got it on me. Oh, you got it now. Oh, give, I mean, give us a honk. Yeah, give, Would you like a bit of yeah, kazoo? Yes, yes please. please, Lena. Kazoo! <laughs> Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, did you get like a, a plaque from Guinness or what happens? Um, no, unfortunately not. I think they should have been t shirts or something, but there wasn't. Um, but I would love a plaque, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was, we, don't, we don't have yeah, one. No, no we, yeah, yeah. That's supposed to be pretty expensive if they had 10,000 biodegradable kazoos and plaques yeah. to give to everyone. Yeah. Was, am I also crazy or did that voice sounded familiar on the stage? Was that, was that Sammy J? Yeah, 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 yeah. Was yeah. it? They got, yeah, they got some big names for the kazoo. <laughs> yeah. wow. I thought he was a kazoo head. <laughs> yeah. Well, All right. Thanks well, so much, Lena. Thank yeah. you for no uh, having a chat See to us about Lena. the kazoo record. I don't, it's still, it's, it's, I still find it hard to fathom that people are like, oh, yeah, yeah. we're going to go down to the, do the kazoo thing. Well, yeah. It's part of an art installation and stuff. That and makes it, more sense yeah. why they did it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm remembering all the other ones that used to do now. Wasn't there one that was like the most people Naruto running in one? <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, they also did Probably. most people like uh, Dragon Ball Z charging yeah, up. Yeah, those people just like ah, just screaming in yeah. fair square. We should do a. Th- we should think no, of a thing. To... Yeah, I don't no. know if we'll get ten thousand there, but I would like to do that. Like, the you... most amount of people doing yeah. a thing. If you pick the right thing, people will turn up. Absolutely. How's this for a whack matchup, Benabelle? Possibly the weirdest couple in Hollywood. Kalisa's milkshake has been known uh, to bring all the boys to the yard. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours. Damn, the most recent boy, 72-year-old ghostbuster Bill Murray. Hey. Yeah, 29 years her senior. Bill Murray and Kalise, like milkshake Kalise are an item. Have they been seen together? Yeah, yeah. He was uh he was at a show on the weekend in London and yeah, apparently they've they've been dating. They got a bit of a thing. It's it's the photos are weird. Like um, it's it's it makes me a bit uncomfortable. Like I'm the first person to not yuck anyone's yum, especially with age gap. I think that's fine, but he He's pretty old. Like he doesn't look <laughs> great. But I guess he's Bill Murray. Yeah, I know he's Bill Murray. Yeah. I don't know. Like he's very funny. Yeah, isn't Bill Murray? He's <laughs> like what's on the inside. He's, the he's got that thing where he doesn't have a phone, so it's like if you want, <laughs> you not if, have if, a yeah, phone. Really? If you want Bill Murray, you've got to just get on to someone that knows him, and they'll <laughs> ask him. And like he, so he just says yes to things. Like to his manager, he'd be like, yeah, nah, but you can't get on to him. Like no one can call him. <laughs> I didn't know he didn't have a phone. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like his famous thing. Anyway, uh, because of this celeb matchup, I wanted to play a game this morning of Did They Date. You can work together, Ben and Bell. You can play along in your car as well if you're listening this morning. Tom Cruise and Sher, did they date? Oh. I'll say yes. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. In, in 85, when Tom was just 23 years old, he was with Sher, 38 at the time. Oh, wow. They met at Sean Penn and Madonna's wedding. There you go. I didn't uh, even know Madonna and Sean Penn were together. Yeah. Sean Penn and Madonna, did they date? <laughs> <laughs> I believe they got married. Yeah, good listening. They did. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Barbara Streisand and Josh Brolin, a.k.a. Thanos, did they date? Yes. I don't know who that is. No. So. They didn't? You creep. She's his stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> she dated his dad. Whoa. Yeah. Currently dates his dad, which is weird. Barbara Streisand is with Thanos' dad. Uh, you would know this one, Belle. This one's pretty easy. Miley Cyrus and Nick Jonas. Uh, y- yes. Yeah, apparently they were known as Nile. Really? At the time, yes. Early yeah. days? Uh, yeah, it must have yeah, yeah, been. They, yeah, they were quite young because there was like rumours of she was with Joe, but no, it was, it was Nick. So that would have yes. been pre Liam. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I thought you meant this. <laughs> Which would have been <laughs> Liam. Li- Lily. Lily, I suppose. Pre uh, Nick Jonas and Delta Goodrum. Now, that was a weird Did one. Did Delta Goodrum date one of the Joe bros? Yeah. I'm yeah. doing the game, Bill. <laughs> Only I say the weird couples, Whoa. okay? Once we're in the Jonas hole, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that was cooler than all the ones I've got. <laughs> damn it. God damn it. I'll leave the celebrity stuff to you. Go on. James Blunt and Emily Blunt, do they date? No. Are they related? No. no just same last name. I thought I'd throw a curly one. <laughs> <laughs> She's married to that John Kuzaniski guy. Yes. From The Office. Very nice couple. Oh. And, yeah, they did Quiet Place together. Yep. Yeah, it was great. Yep. Anyway, last one. Shia LaBeouf and Hilary Duff. Oh. I mean, wild if yes. 
Yes, it is, yes. Even though you didn't technically give me an answer. <laughs> you said wild if yes. So I suppose I suppose I suppose technically a win, but yeah, Disney Power Cup right there. They really? were together for years. Even when he was on Transformers, they were together. Really? Yeah, and then she left him when he started doing this sort of stuff. I feel like Shire's <laughs> career was holes. Transformers <laughs> yes. and then didn't do much. And then and then it was the video. Do it! <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Just do it! Bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, and then he, did, he did that rap. He did that rap yeah, out somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's a long way from holes, for sure. <laughs> for more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.